okay, well, thank you. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Good evening and welcome to the seven o'clock session of the January 21st, 2020 special meeting of the city council. I would like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, council members Watkins? Here. Matthews? Here. Brown? Here. Glover? <laughs> Here. Crone? Here. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers? Here. And Mayor Cummings is absent. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to announce that this is a special meeting. Our topic this evening is to hear from applicants who applied to various city boards and commissions. No oral communications or discussions on other items will be heard this evening. I'll now open it up for public comment. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment on the advisory body interviews? Seeing none, we'll move on. So we'll move on to our interviews. And uh, again, I thank everyone for being here tonight on a rainy night. Um, the way I'd like to approach the flow of the meeting tonight is to go through the commissions alphabetically and in alphabetical, alphabetical order, call the names of the people who indicated that particular commission as their first choice. You will be invited up to the lectern to speak and you'll have two minutes to speak per person. If you wish, if you apply for multiple um, advisory uh, bodies, then you'll need to cover those bodies in your two minutes that you're invited up. So you won't be coming up more than one time, basically. Once you speak, you, are in, uh, you may leave or stay to listen to other applicants. All the council members have received um, and reviewed all the applications uh, received to date. And I'd just like to let you know that council members after this evening may reach out to you individually with additional questions about your application. And tonight is really a time for you to introduce yourself personally, amplify your qualifications and relevant background and motivations. And additionally, the meeting is mostly informal to allow the council to get to know you. And um, I, before we dive into um, the process, I just want to make sure, just give the council members uh, just to, to see if you have any quick questions or comments before we start. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just very Happy. briefly, thank you. We have just an amazing array of applicants here before us. Um, some people indicated a reference, others did not. Uh, if you'd like to, if you did not include a reference, I would be interested in having that as well. And yes, I do want to just, um, again, thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, and uh, it's always really encouraging when you see so many people interested in serving um, our community and getting involved in these advisory bodies. Uh, they're a very important part of our process as council members. And so uh, thank you again for all your interest. So we will go ahead and get started. As I call up your name, uh, please line up to speak. And I'm gonna call off all the names just so you sort of know your cue in the line. So the first commission uh, is going to be the Arts Commission. And I'd like to uh, invite up Yvonne Byers, Christopher Carr, Judy Gunstra, Grunstra, John Carwin, Mary Kopp, Marilyn Kuch, and John Rawls. So those will be the people um, speaking for arts. And again, if you've, uh, this should be your first, your first, uh, your primary application that you submitted in terms of which advisory body. And I do have a note that Michelle Peregrine needs to leave at eight. And so Michelle, I'll be watching the clock and make sure um, most likely you'll have to skip ahead because um, Sister Cities is a, a little ways back. Is Michelle in the, in the audience? She's okay, great. So I'll probably take you right after arts just to make sure you're out on time. Okay, please come on up. Yeah. And if you haven't done this before, there's a green light and then a yellow light will give you a cue that you're ending, getting close to your two minutes. We, we will keep track of that for you. And um, Yvonne, welcome and uh, go ahead and give us a start, please. Okay, um, so my name's Mary Kopp. I don't, I believe oh. Yvonne's here. Okay. So Yvonne, nobody, so Mary, you were the first. Okay, great. I get it. Okay, go ahead, Mary, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Uh, hello, council members. My name is Mary Kopp. I am seeking to become an arts commissioner. I, um, I was suggested by Mary Totaro as um, a person that should apply. I have been a resident of Santa Cruz for 10 years, during which 
I've worked in arts organizations and nonprofit community centers, such as Community Television of Santa Cruz County, Museum of Art and History, Neoteric School of Classical Realism, Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Libraries, and I'm currently the director and curator of Felix Culpa Art Galleries. Um, during these positions, I have curated hundreds of artist exhibitions. I've never spoken in front of the council. It's so intimidating. Nice at all. <laughs> Doing <laughs> very well. Formal night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've curated hundreds of artists' exhibitions, produced countless collaborative events, and sought to create openings for artists. I'm interested in becoming an arts commissioner so I can advise the council and help steward such wonderful city arts programs as the Coastal Rail Trail and Scrap Arts Residency. I also would like to help bring more awareness to opportunities for public art through the Marrow Match Program, Sculpt Tour, and the Graphic Traffic Blocks Program. These programs have enhanced our town and I want to see these programs reflect the diversity of voices here in Santa Cruz and would give careful consideration to our ability to be equitable, inclusive, and address environmental justice. And just an additional quote, the artist does not wait till death to live in the spiritual world. That's from Thriftful Cemetery. So thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much, Mary. <laughs> thank you. And you made it. You did great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really applaud yeah. you all for being able to be in front of an audience all the time. <laughs> thank you. Uh, is Marilyn here? Hi, Marilyn, come on up. Thank you. Sure. My name is Marilyn Cooks. I've appeared before you a couple times before applying for the advisory council position. I think I squandered my time in the past, spending it too much in touting my corporate credentials in uh, corporate management, uh, uh, consulting with all levels of businesses and nonprofits and being an entrepreneur and being a 25 year self-supporting professional artist. But what I think I've failed to do in the past is say and emphasize if I made it at all clear that for those 25 years, Santa Cruz and the Santa Cruz arts community has been the focus and the passion of my life. I live here, I live it. Uh, so I, I want to say that uh, ev everything, I care so deeply about the Santa Cruz community and the Santa Cruz arts community particularly. Santa Cruz is facing major changes and challenges in everything from uh, urban and architectural planning, to how we address the homeless, to how we deal with the absolute change in our demographics. I would love, so appreciate, to be a part of the Santa Cruz uh, Arts Council, who has done so much, and I appreciate everything they've done and accomplished, but I would love to participate with them, not only in furthering their current agenda, but helping them address and integrating the arts community and arts in general into what we do to address all those other major issues. So I think I could land a level of skill, experience, perspective, and caring. And I do hope they'll consider me for the position. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marilyn. And next, I've either got Lucas or John. John, John okay. <laughs> I'll take John. Thank you, John, for come on up. Thank you very much. Good evening, Santa Cruz City Council. My name is John Rawls. Uh, I have applied a couple of times mm. before. However, I live just outside of city limits. I'm in the county, uh, so I'm only eligible for an at-large position, I believe. Uh, for the last decade, I've run a graphic design or a design and marketing company uh, full-time. Uh, for the last half dozen years, I've been running an arts website, uh, localsantacruz.com, that provides free marketing tools for local artists. I've been, in those half dozen years, I've been involved in arts programs throughout the county. Uh, I've been a contractor for City Arts, working on projects. Uh, I'm currently a board member at the Santa Cruz Art League, as well as the Aptosh Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so I'm not only very interested and involved in local arts, uh, I'm completely and totally in love with the local arts culture and community. I think that it's one of the 
uh, strongest tools that Santa Cruz has available to affect change and to uh, reach also communities outside of Santa Cruz. And, and that's why I'm applying again, is because even though I may not be eligible at living in the county, uh, I still have a lot of faith in the local arts community. So thank you very much. Thanks, John. Okay, did any, I don't think anybody arrived late. Last call for the Arts Commission, if you arrived at all late. Okay, we'll move on for the Commission for the Prevention of Violence Against Women. Uh, there's one vacancy, and that is for uh, Council Member Matthews' nomination. So I'd like to invite up Deborah Christie, Anne Marie Costa, Shelley Knipe, Knipe, Marvin Mays, Alex Norton, and Beth Thurman, please. Oh, wait, sorry, I went off the wrong list. Shelly Knapp, Marvin Mays, Alex Norton, and Beth Thurman, those four. And Michelle, I'll do you next, I promise. Okay, Shelly, is Shelly here? Okay. I'll have Shelly go first, and are you Mer Mer Mervin. Mervin, okay, yes. I'll have you go next, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Shelley Kniep, and I was referred and encouraged to apply for this position by Brooke. Um, I'm applying to work with the Commission for the Prevention of Violence Against Women. Tonight, I'd like to share some facts with you about homeless teens and women. 61% of girls report sexual abuse at home as their reason for running away from one in three teams will be recruited by a pimp within 48 hours of leaving home. The lifetime risk for violent sexual assault for mentally ill homeless women is 97%, making sexual violence a norm for this population. 25% of women surveyed do not stay in any kind of shelter because of past sexual violence inflicted upon them while staying at a shelter. Staff members at homeless shelters are rarely trained to detect and respond appropriately to those who have been sexually assaulted. I personally find these facts deeply disturbing. I feel what our community needs as a whole is to provide new funds to, facil to facilitate collaboration and training to take place for homeless trauma and assault victims. This collaboration needs to include resources of funders, policymakers, law enforcement officers, and prosecutors. These approaches must be especially sensitive to this population who face a much greater stigma of discrimination and barriers of access on the basis of race, citizenship status, sexual orientation, economics, and disabilities. Safety must be provided to homeless teens, teens. If appointed, I will work hard and diligently to participate and help homeless women and teens, as well as sexually harassed and those experiencing domestic abuse. Thank you, Thank Shelley. you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Okay, next, Mervin. <laughs> Uh, my name is Mervyn Mays. I'm a first-time applicant. I've lived in the uh, city for, uh, since 1987, off and on. Uh, I'm a physician scientist, uh, having worked uh, uh, on the faculty at Stanford, UCSF, and Imperial College. Uh, the problem, as the previous applicant has stated, is extremely grave. It's one that I first came across uh, while I was a chair um, at UCSF. Uh, and uh, recognize the uh, imbalance of the situation uh, and um, am committed to working towards um, equality. And uh, I think this is a, an opportunity for me to give back to the community something that um, I've witnessed personally uh, and I'm willing to serve. And I recognize as a first time applicant and not met any of the um, members of the council before that you know nothing about me, but if you would like to ask me any question, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mervyn. And Beth, 
come on up. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members, and Clerks. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all, and I really am grateful for all the members of our community who are here. Uh, CATVA and every other commission, it really warms my heart to see everyone who wants to serve the community. So first off, I'm a concerned community member. I have been for 42 years in the county, over 20 within the city. I'm a mother, I'm a woman. Um, I have served as a commissioner from April 2015 through December 2019, and it was one of the most rewarding opportunities that I've had helping out in our community on, you know, whether it's events or I served four years on the sheriff's advisory team, which was helpful for all of us because we were able to get Sheriff Hart and Dr. Lauren Zephro to speak to us in regards to the SART delays and, you know, when I'm able to connect as a, a former board member. Uh, this means a lot to me. I appreciate everything that our commission has done in the decades that it's been in um, in service, and I, I ask that you um, consider my application tonight and down the road. If there are other opportunities to serve the commission, I would love to rejoin and be able to help out and provide some service to our community. So thank you all. Thank you, Beth. Okay, Michelle, would you like to come up and uh, you are applying for Sister Cities Committee, correct? Welcome. Good evening, council members. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm up for reappointment with the Sister Cities Committee. Um, and uh, as you can see in my original application, um, I've been passionate about the field of international education for most of my career. I started with Sister Cities in fall of 2017. At the time, I was working for the US Department of State as an international exchange specialist. I've since moved on to a position at a local community college, but I remain dedicated as ever to the field. Um, I served last year as vice chair for the Sister City Committee. I've been actively involved in the Sestri Levante subcommittee and was involved in the standing up of the Biarritz Friendship City relationship. Uh, and then just last week was elected to chair of the committee. So I really hope that you uh, approve my reappointment so that I can uh, continue to serve this year as chair, uh, during which I'd like to focus on um, really raising the visibility and the profile of the committee within the broader community here in Santa Cruz. It's doing a lot of great work, but I find that not a lot of people know about it. Um, so I'd like to do that by looking into some possible fundraising options, uh, perhaps establishing some public events that could attract a wider audience. Uh, in addition, I'd like to focus on further shoring up the Biarritz Friendship City relationship and do whatever I can to support our already very strong uh, student exchanges with Sestri Levante and Shingu Japan. I'll leave it there. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, you bet. <laughs> Does anyone else here have small kids or a need to get home early tonight? Okay. You do? <laughs> you do. Okay. What, what's your name? Okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and help you get back home to your kids. So why don't you come up and we'll hear from you, Jonathan. Yeah, sure, no problem. Thank you for coming tonight. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members. I'm Jonathan Coleman. Um, I realized sitting there I was referred by my wife um, who told me to apply and stop telling her about my ideas. Um, I'm honored to be here. I grew up in Santa Cruz, walking and biking to Galt Elementary and later biking and eventually driving to Santa Cruz High. Uh, I moved back about four years ago, and I work as a mental health therapist at uh, County Children's Behavioral Health. Um, I'm dedicated to serving this community. I'm interested in joining the Transportation and Public Works Commission so that I can support the ongoing maintenance and development of our city's infrastructure. My master's in social work program provided me with solid research and analysis skills for thinking about the impacts of projects on people and communities, especially those people that might otherwise be forgotten. 
I put this framework to use in my work at the county where I regularly conduct research in order to inform my decisions or to make recommendations about uh, projects or operations. During my career as a public servant, first as a teacher, now as a therapist, I've consistently served on advisory committees and focused my efforts on the improvement of operations and equity for the recipients of servant services, always with a spirit of collaboration. I'd be very excited to be able to bring this experience to bear as a member of the commission to enact your vision of health and all policies and to support the transportation and public works department to continue addressing the most relevant and pressing <laughs> issues for our community from traffic to climate change and from road user safety to equity and access to transportation. My daughter just turned eight months old and more than anything I'm here on her behalf so that over the course of her life she can safely walk and bike to school and so that I know that I'm doing my part to make sure she is as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, I'll go back uh, to alphabetical. Uh, next up is the Downtown Commission and I have Ryan Alp Althaus, Edna Brennan, Joe Ferrara, Linnea Holgers, and Daniel Nelson, please. If you could line up in that order. And is Ryan here? Any of these folks here? Going, going, gone. Anyone here for downtown? Yeah. Okay, are you Ryan? Uh, no, Daniel. Daniel, okay, great. Welcome, Daniel. Hi, council members. Uh, good evening. Um, Clicks, how are you doing? Um, so this is my first time in front of council as well. Um, so thanks for considering my application. I've been working downtown in Santa Cruz um, for the last five years and have lived down here for the last three um, and plan to have many more years doing both of those things. Um, because of my personal experience and through the personal experiences of uh, some of my coworkers, my neighbors, my friends. Um, I'm really familiar with a lot of the issues facing downtown residents and workers. Um, one of the things uh, that you all actually passed recently, the distribution of jump by credits uh, and the bus passes to downtown workers was actually a huge boon to a lot of these people I've talked to and to myself personally. Um, in fact, a lot of people I've talked to are really, um, really hot on alternatives to driving and you know getting different uh, modes of transportation like going into the city. Um, so I have a master's in economics. Um, I've worked two years in um, the public works department in San Jose. So I feel like that gives me a decent um, experience or decent experience uh, to represent some of my coworkers and uh, employees of downtown. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me right now, reach out later, email, phone, um, definitely available to answer anything you might have. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Just make sure I haven't missed anybody. So anyone here, anyone here for the Downtown Commission? Okay. Great. We will move on to the Equal Employment Opportunity Committee and Nancy Degnan. Is Nancy here tonight? No? Okay. We will now move on to Historic Preservation Commission. I have Dennis Diego, Albert, Albert Narath, and David Subitz. Subak. Subak. There we go. <laughs> Dennis, Albert, or David, are you here? Yes. Dennis. Okay. Please come on up, Dennis. Uh, good evening, uh, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, and staff. Uh, I'm a, a resident of Santa Cruz for 35 years, and I've had a practice uh, for 30 years. All, all those years I've been working as an architect, and um, I came originally from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, where I, I received my degree in architecture and started uh, working. And at that time, I became very interested in historic preservation and the uh, historic assets of a community. I, wore, I did a lot of projects in the Vieux-Carré Commission and became, com became familiar with the process of the Vieux-Carré Commission commissioners and um, also uh, practiced here, worked, came here and worked with uh, a firm from 85 to 89 and 89 established my 
practice and participated in the reconstruction uh, process of the downtown after the Loma Prieta earthquake. I continue my education by uh, participating in uh, classes offered through the California Pres Preservation Foundation. Uh, I'm a member of, a board member of the Friends of the Cow Lime Kiln, and uh, I uh, am very avidly uh, working on projects uh, both at UCSC. Some of the projects that I've done personally as an architect, represented uh, my clients as an architect, uh, you may be familiar with um, post-earthquake, uh, Palomar Restaurant Courtyard, uh, Lob Nelson Community Center, uh, restoration window uh, remodeling, Santa Cruz uh, Museum of Natural History, and uh, the original historic uh, City Hall of Capitola on Monterey Avenue. Uh, I uh, have an experience. I have experience pre presenting projects, and I hope that uh, you'll allow me to continue and serve on the commission. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Any other members uh, or applicants for the Historic Preservation Commission? I've got Albert and David as on my list. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to the Parks and Recreation Commission then. Uh, Bradley Angel, J.M. Brown, Deborah Christie, and Sky Quinn, please. On up. Hi there. Okay, Bradley, come on. Thank you. Thanks for uh, being Good here. evening. Uh, you guys are in trouble with two architects in a row. I'm sure you're going to be confused. <laughs> um, but anyway, my name is Brad Angel. I've come up here a couple of times on behalf of the Grand Park neighbors. Uh, I'm here because now, instead of complaining, hopefully I can be helpful. And um, uh, I think uh, my early experience or in training, I think it really would help for this advisory board. And the, uh, I got the, a, a certificate in, in sustainable urbanism in 2009 while I did my uh, Master of Architecture uh, degree in, in Texas. And then um, d after 2009, I went to work and then it, I wasn't really happy with the work I was doing. I went back for a PhD. And then during the PhD, I did a PhD in architecture as well. And during that PhD program, I actually uh, studied the Isla Vista Rec and Park District in uh, Goleta, Santa Barbara. And, uh, you know, that whole, the IVRPD was all about how parks can become kind of an antidote to uh, political strife in a community. And I feel like um, a lot of the activities that have happened in the last year in our parks here in town have had some of that same juice, that same type of um, political uh, uh, strife, especially in our, in our neighborhood, the Grant Park neighbors. And um, I think what I think I've really learned a lot about uh, in this past year helping Grant Park neighbors is actually I now have this kind of feel of communal association with all the parks. I go to like the West Side, I go to uh, Frederick Street and all these other places and I really do identify with both the neighborhood, the community, the administrative staff, and then also how we're trying to deal with a lot of our issues right there on the ground in these open spaces. And I feel like that experience, not just the academic and the practice experience, but also this kind of uh, uh, the stakeholder experience really helped me be a good advisor, a good, uh, I don't know, have some good knowledge to help out. Anyway, thank you so much. Great, thanks mm -hmm. very much. And J.M. Brown. Good evening, Mayor Myers, members of the council. Um, I'm J.M. Brown, I'm chair of your Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, seek reappointment, um, especially since the, um, my colleagues on the commission just selected me to be chair again for 2020. So I'd like to have the opportunity to serve for many reasons, not the least of which is that. Um, and, you know, I really see my role uh, as chair of the um, commission and really as a member in general, as a facilitator and someone who really seeks to try to find compromise. Um, the members of the commission are a really interesting group. They come from all uh, manners of differences in ideological and political backgrounds, and yet we have worked really hard over the past year to send this council unanimous or nearly unanimous decisions on the golf course, the pool, park access, Loud Nelson, et cetera. And I think that's the strong work of a group of people who really want to collaborate and work together. Um, and so I'm really, I'm really proud of that group and would like to continue working with them. Um, also, we have a fantastic staff at the parks led by our new parks 
somewhat new parks director who really um, sees the value of working with the commission and really um, uh, bringing departmental ideas as well as direction from the council to the commission and um, float that work back up to the community and the council. So I really look forward to continuing to work with the staff. Um, and in terms of my strengths um, serving on the commission, um, I think I have a pretty deep knowledge of the city and the department um, having served on the commission and um, also having um, uh, covered the uh, council as a reporter for many, many years. And um, so I bring all that knowledge to bear and also again, just really seeking to find common ground uh, with our commissioners to deliver to the council uh, you know, a, a result that they can actually work with. Um, and then in my professional role uh, as an analyst for uh, Supervisor Bruce McPherson, I bring a lot of county knowledge to, um, to bear on, on questions that come before the commission. So um, thank you for your consideration for reappointment tonight. Thank you, Jam. Uh, Jam Brown, I just wanted to say, um, been trying to follow up on, uh, I've been asking commissioners about your your chairship and um, I have good things, good things were reported and I really appreciate your service with that group. It uh, seems like it's going really well, but just wanted to say that, thank you. Good, thank you, I appreciate it. Anyone else here for Parks and Rec? Okay, great. Okay, we are gonna move on to the Planning Commission and we have two reappointments up. And I have a long list of folks here tonight. So I have Candace Brown, Gus Sabellos, Anna Marie Costa, Cindy Dawson, Zav Hirschfield, Sean Maxwell, Greg Pepping, Ron Pomerantz, Mark Premack, William Schultz, and Robert Singleton. Hmm. So if you can line up in that order. Any other folks? For planning, so I've got three and a long list. Are you for planning also? Yeah, I am. Okay, and what's your name? Sean Maxwell. Sean. Okay, great. Just so I know. Any other of those folks here? Okay, great. Um, Candice, why don't you come on up? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, my name's Candice and Candice Brown. Um, I've been a member of this community for 45 years. Um, and as you probably know by now, because I've talked at many of these hearings, I've been very passionate about land use and transportation issues for the last five years. Um, but before that, I was actually, um, just to go back a little bit, um, was involved with high tech and business development, negotiating very complex contracts and negotiating for about 28 years. Um, I was then involved in shutting down um, a family architectural business that um, unfortunately had to be shut down at the passing of a family member who was a very talented architect and um, left hundreds of projects that had to be archived and we had to find a place for these. So we, I ended up sending up a collection of the Robert A. German collection of um, retrospective of 25 years of architecture for Silicon Valley for both commercial and residential, many different modern and um, traditional styles and through that I learned quite a bit and it took over two years to actually set up that collection and then get accepted by a academic institution. Um, so um, about five years ago, um, realized that a lot of things were going on with the city, with the corridor plan, with the general plan and its implementation, realized that there was a lot of flaws in that when I had um, started attending many of those advisory committees and actually filmed all of them, the only public record I found out now of those actual uh, committee meetings. And I think that the commission is really important at this time, we're at a critical juncture of trying to represent the needs of the community when we're, uh, we have in the last two years, um, 30, 40 different housing bills that have come to us. And I think the community needs to be prepared for onslaught of something that would be very significant to this community. I have studied this. I've become really almost a scholar of it. People actually come to me. I've found many ways that communities of using these housing bills for public um, benefit. And I just wanted to say that I would be very honored to be a part of the Planning Commission as a result of that. Sorry, I ran out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Candace. Okay, next, hi, Gus, come on up. Good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Gus Ceballos. Um, most of you may know me already um, through either my work with the Seniors Council or through just uh, community involvement. Uh, you have my application in front of you and I really don't have that much more to add 
to what I already have written down because I still feel the same way. Uh, I really think it's very important um, to me to be part of uh, both uh, planning and my secondary was parked in rec. And I only come here uh, really to just ask for an opportunity. Opportunity for myself, uh, an op opportunity for a group which I believe that I can represent, which is Latinos in, in the city of Santa Cruz. Um, I was born here in Santa Cruz, um, San Dominican Hospital. The, the Mexican population at that time was probably less than 1%. There were maybe 10 me Mexican families and we all knew each other. Over 50 years now, uh, the population is about 22% Latino here in Santa Cruz. And I look around and, you know, I, I really don't see that, that many Latinos here represented in the committees. Uh, the county is 33% Latino. So it kind of seems to me that they don't feel they're represented. Uh, not even underrepresented. They're underrepresented. I mean, they're just not even represented. And I want to be someone that they can look up to and be there to speak for a community. So if I'm just given the opportunity, I make sure that their voices will be heard. So thank you. Thanks, Kev. And I apologize for mispronouncing your last name. <laughs> you heard it two, three different ways. Okay, well, I'm sure, I'm sure I've heard you say it that way. Um, next up is Cindy Dawson. Good evening, Vice Mayor Myers and council members and staff. My name is Cindy Dawson and I am applying for a position on the Planning Commission. I look for the, forward to the opportunity to bring my over 20 years experience as a scientist and natural resource manager and policy advisor to work on the commission. My most recent uh, relevant uh, professional experience that I could bring to the commission would be my four years up in Sacramento as the state of California Marine Protected Area Policy Advisor, staffing the Secretary of Natural Resources, and, and that position was focused on marine spatial planning. And clearly there are some differences between ocean planning and land planning, but there are many similarities in the challenges and opportunities. Um, planning and development is complex, and I feel that my ability that I've developed um, through my professional career, uh, ability to uptake information, to weigh all sides, um, and having a very uh, significant familiarity with both state and federal environmental laws will be a, a real asset to the Planning Commission. Um, the fo focus of my professional career really comes down to making sure decision makers have and understand the information they need to make informed decisions. And that core principle of informed decision making is really something I want to bring to the Planning Commission. Um, I look forward to the opportunity to work with staff and fellow commissioners and the council members to find solutions to these real challenges we have around planning and development in Santa Cruz. Um, I wanna make sure that we're making decisions and looking for solutions that protect our environment, protect our quality of life, and are directly addressing equity and affordability. Um, we're not the only community facing these issues. Um, and what I also bring to the Planning Commission is a, a diverse professional network. So I hope that you will um, uh, consider my application. Um, I thank you in, in advance for your consideration and I'm happy to take any questions um, if you guys need to reach out. Thanks. Thank you. Here, flying through this tonight. <laughs> okay, uh, next up is our, oh, I'm sorry, Sean. So you tra I'm trained to be looking over there. My apologies. It's okay. All right, my first time here. Hi, everybody. I, Hi. I don't know all the uh, vice mayor, <laughs> council members. Um, I was recommended by Justin to, to apply for planning. Um, I am a builder. I came here 18 years ago, about to have my first child, will be part of that, and um, had no money, was a city boy from Long Beach, um, ended up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, never picked up a hammer. First neighbor I met, hey, you wanna work with me? Sweet, 18 years later, I've been doing the same thing. So I have a lot of experience being a builder, my favorite, I'm a carpenter, is what I consider myself, uh, my favorite thing to do. Um, 
but um, I, got my, I, I was lucky enough to get into town. 2008 happened, lost a lot of work. So I went back to school because I could do that. Ended up getting a um, uh, honors degree in business management economics, which has been really helpful in just being part of the academic community here, meeting a lot of other people that I would not normally have met in building. Finished that, but then the economy bounced back. I'm raising two kids um, and you do what you know best. So I went back to that and been doing that since. But I love this place and I'm glad I'm lucky I get to live here. Um, it wasn't always clear that that was gonna be happening. Um, so I'm looking forward to being a part of something more than just making a paycheck and I wanna be a part of the community. I've been uh, in Santa Cruz City for 18 years now. So um, I'm happy to be a part and I'm, I don't know much about planning but Justin thinks I'd be good at it, and I have, I'm have i a really quick learner, and I'm, uh, I'm semi-young still. Don't, <laughs> mi don't minus the gray. Um, but yeah, thanks for hearing me out, and I look forward to hopefully helping more. Thanks, Sean. Last call for Planning Commission. Seeing no other call. Okay, we'll move on to the remaining folks who are here for Sister Cities. So that would be Chandra Duffy, Leo Jed, Sarah Coleman, Ira Park, and Michelle. Michelle's already gone. So those folks who are here. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So Sister Cities, um, are you Chandra? I'm on it. Thank council members. Thank you for um, considering me for reappointment. I've been serving um, one year, I've served a one year term uh, finishing a vacancy last year on the Sister Cities body. Um, I've spent four years serving on the Shingu subcommittee as well, um, helping with ingoing and outgoing delegations um, since 2016 and I've really enjoyed my time um, both on the Sister Cities and the subcommittee um, teams. And um, I would love to continue another, on another term. Um, I currently work at 1440 Multiversity. I've been a um, resident of Santa Cruz for 20 years. Um, I became involved with the Sister Cities in general, thanks to Cynthia Matthews and my prior employment at Visit Santa Cruz County. Um, I pride myself on my connections in the community and networking and think that I bring a lot to um, both the Sister Cities uh, Committee and the subcommittee for that. So thank you. Great. If you have thank any you questions, for, let me know. Thank you for Thanks. being here tonight. Thank you. And let's see, am I my, my list? Here I come on up, please. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm here to park. And this setting is my first experience. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, in Korea, we never have this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have one picture that is Korean culture, traditional cultural dress. And then uh, I applied for the sister city uh, committee member to introduce our traditional Korean culture to Santa Cruzian. And I want to bring the Santa Cruzians to South Korea. So. Um, I am a fibrinitis faculty member. I'm a, a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine, and also I'm RN. And I don't know, you, maybe you guys know late um, Mary Dupit, she's a mm -hmm. famous lady. And she introduced me, and she was my English teacher when I moved here in 1993. So I lived here for 26 years, and my two, three children, they graduate Harvard High School and all well done education, so I'm happy. So now it's time to serve back to Santa Cruz. So I have a lot of time. I am not retired yet. I got Medicare, but I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so also I involve some of the Korean American um, Association in Santa Clara County. So I can, I have a lot of connection there. So hopefully I can do better job for Santa Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. If you want to see this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. 
we're on to transportation and public works. Um, so I have Dana Bagshaw, Jonathan Coleman, Summer Daly, Ron Goodman, Kyle Kelly, Lucas Roy Lehman, and Samantha Vrooman. I wanna line up in that order. And Dana, I'll have you, I'll have you start. Welcome. Good evening, it's good to see everyone. Um, Dana Bagshaw, um, my second time to apply for this position. I'm back again because I really believe that public transportation and the public works department is instrumental in making our city strong. We need um, a system that is resilient and sustainable in these climate crisis days. And I feel that the transportation is key to doing that. Um, I've learned a lot about the public works department itself within the last year. I uh, feel like I have opal, open channels of communication with key members in, in the department, like um, Claire, and um, um, I've all communicated with Mark and Chris. I also have a good communication with uh, the Metro and R RTC, which I think is part of the overall picture. So um, I continue to champion public transportation. I have the Bus by Choice group. We're still going out once a month uh, on trips. The one that we did this year that um, attracted the most, the best attendance um, and that I'm most proud of, we went over to San Jose um, on the Highway 17 bus and we met with a member of the um, Department of Transportation there in San Jose and he showed us what they've done in downtown San Jose to integrate bus lanes, bike lanes, space for pedestrians and, and cars and even wheelie bins, they're part of the picture too. So it was really, really interesting and I, I really liked the way they took an incremental, experimental approach and I think we can do things like that here. So thank you for the opportunity, thank Thanks, you. Thanks Dana. Okay, next is, uh, let's see, we had Jonathan already. Summer Daly, please. Hi, Summer, come on up. Yeah. Well, I am Summer Daly. I applied for the advisory opening with, opening with Transportation and Public Works. Uh, I've lived on the west side of Santa Cruz for 12 years, and I'm passionate about our community, and I'm interested in public service. My interest was peaked after I noticed how successful the rollout of Go Santa Cruz was, and it's been a great transportation demand management solution. Um, I thought it was engaging and relatable and something that I'd like to take part in. We all see that growing population demand is straining infrastructure, and I think that I'm qualified to help. Uh, my current role at Looker Data Sciences downtown, I'm responsible for budgeting and project management for our large-scale real estate expansion projects. I review commercial leases, I work with architects, builders, interior design firms to create collaborative spaces that suit the needs of teams across the world. Um, I think my current work experience and past experience in accounting makes me qualified for this opening in particular. No matter what, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service to the community. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Summer. Okay, uh, Ron Goodman, is Ron here? Hey, Kyle, come on up, Kyle. Thanks Vice for being Mayor. here. Yep. Vice Mayor, mayors, uh, council members and staff, uh, thanks for having me up here. Uh, so I've applied for transportation and public works. Um, most of my interest in this comes from uh, my own belief that we need to take more climate action right now. Uh, as far as professional experience, um, I'm a mathematician and a software engineer. I've managed many large scale projects over, over years uh, and I can <laughs> soak in a lot of really boring information and, and bring it to bear and try to figure out the right, right steps that need to be taken. And at the same time, I think that you know we need to build a good, humane society where, where everyone can thrive here in Santa Cruz. Um, I'm, a, I'm a parent of three, uh, and a frequent biker, uh, cyclist, and uh, bus traveler here in Santa Cruz. So, me. Thank, Thank you, Kyle. Hey, I've got Lucas. 
There. Hi, Council. I'm Lucas Roy Lehman, and uh, I've been living in Santa Cruz for 25 years. About the late 90s, I was actually on the Santa Cruz Downtown Plaza Committee with Christopher Crone. Maybe you remember me from way back then. Um, and then later, not much later, I was on the part of the Energy Action Coalition, which got formed into the Energy committee subcommittee that we advise the energy commission on a lot of the projects that turned into the the first solar installation here on city hall we were also fundamental in sort of putting putting forth the idea which ultimately became the monterey bay um, utility district we were about 15 years ahead of our time back then i didn't move to the um to the unincorporated area so i couldn't really participate in uh in volunteer stuff here in the city happy to be back in the city my experience uh, has been an entrepreneur my whole life. Uh, I lived in LA, so I have a real passion for transportation gone wrong um, and how to do it right. Went to school in Santa Barbara where they had a wonderful biking system and then also grad school in uh, Amherst, Massachusetts where the five college area had a wonderful system of public transportation and busing and things like that. So um, been a long time cyclist, know what Santa Cruz offers and the pitfalls as well for cyclists and just really passionate about um, making a difference in a place that I love. For the last eight years, I've been a volunteer with the Freedom Within Prison Project, going inside the Salinas Valley Prison and facilitating trust circles and emotional literacy. I've actually just stepped down from that after eight years, so um, I've got I've got room in my schedule to be passionate about things a little closer to home. So I'd love to be able to make a make a difference to the kind of the I think the arteries and the sinews of this town uh, to really make it function well. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Okay, Samantha, come on up, please. Good evening. I am Samantha. Uh, Sam is fine. Um, thanks for having us all here. Um, I'm excited to apply for the Public Works and Transportation Commission. Um, I was born and raised in Scotts Valley, um, graduated high school, which was great, and <laughs> went to <laughs> UC Berkeley, graduated there with a degree in civil and environmental engineering. I um, currently am a practicing civil engineer. Um, I am an owner and principal engineer of Bowman Williams Civil Engineers and Land Surveyors. So my professional background uh, suits this commission fairly well, I would hope. Um, I moved back here to Santa Cruz six years ago after exploring some other counties. Um, and there's really no better city than Santa Cruz, so uh, I'm really excited. Uh, to hopefully give back to the city and in a manner um, that allows everybody to explore infrastructure more deeply because it's one of my passions. Um, I was a domestic pro cyclist until fairly recently and so I have a great appreciation for cycling and bike lanes and county roads as well. Um, I was recommended to this position by Claire Fleischler or I don't know what her last name is at this point. Um, <laughs> and I also um, used to work with Dale Hensby, who is a current commissioner on the Public Works and Transportation Commission. Um, and he had great things to say about the work that they do um, and highly recommended the role of an advisor uh, to you, the city council. Um, I have done a lot of other exciting uh, volunteer projects. I took uh, numerous courses in design for sustainable communities when I was at Berkeley, and that led to some projects in Tanzania where we built rainwater harvesting tanks, and um, that's my time. So it was great <laughs> talking to you, and if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we have one more commission, the Water Commission. And I have Diana Alfaro, Justin Burks, Linda Cover, uh, Doug Engfer, Melissa Mahoney, and Alejandro Paramo. Diana, we'll have you first. Hello. Hello. Um, so thank you all for hearing me out today. I applied for the Water Commission, and it might be a little uh, wondering why. Um, 
I, I believe that water and my experience within uh, the nonprofit sector is um, really do uh, combine really well, both in understanding financing, how um, process, and also uh, the community engagement component, especially considering some of the developments that the water uh, department will be going through in the next few years, which is really exciting. Um, and I feel like that experience that I have through my work as a nonprofit developer can definitely uh, help with that process. Um, I also can bring some diversity to the group. Um, I know that uh, it tends to be a, a little older crowd, so I hope that um, that can definitely help in some ways. And also, as a renter, as a member, as a resident of downtown, as a Latina, um, it could definitely help with that as well. Um, also, I just want you to note, since it wasn't on the agenda, that I will be stepping down of the Latino Affairs Commission if I am appointed, so an appointment would have to be made there um, as the city appointee to the county commission. Um, but yeah, thank you, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thanks. Thank you, Diana. Uh, Justin? Hi. Good evening, honorable council members. My name is Justin Burks. Um, I'm here tonight because I have passion and conviction to provide ongoing support to the community. And uh, I mean that not only that I've come up here multiple times to make my case and build upon my experiences, but it's something I've felt deeply since I moved here uh, in 2004. Um, I'm a long-term city Santa Cruz resident with my long-term partner, Matthew, uh, where we spent most of our time here as low-income rent uh, rate payers, where we are still renters for the far foreseeable future. Um, and I've worked here also like with the city and currently as a commuter over the hill to Valley Water. Um, as a water conservation specialist, I recently launched a pilot program to support a low-income housing property to retrofit all their toilets to state-of-the-art fixtures to reduce the impact of rising water rates on them while saving half of the amount of water they were using pr previously. I launched a $200,000 countywide program for low-income U.S. veteran and elderly residents of Santa Clara County to install code-compliant gray water systems which provides resiliency to their landscapes, but also helps them grow food and helps ensure a verdant landscape in the face of climate change, not only taking, to, taking into account the embedded energy of reduced irrigation use by reusing that water in their landscapes. I was on a, I was the project lead for a special project where we analyzed our capital project timelines over the last 20 years and combined with data analysis and informational interviews with stakeholders, we uh, provided recommendations to my agency from which we've uh, implemented uh, Microsoft Teams to improve internal stakeholder engagement. And also, I'm on the review committee for our customer relationship management software, which will in improve our external stakeholder um, engagement. I'm humble enough to admit that was part, probably part in the pipeline before I made those recommendations. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Linda. Hi, Linda. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, Hi, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, my name is Linda Cover. Um, I'm um, uh, an artist, um, an educator, and a community activist. Um, and what I feel I could bring to the Water Commission um, is a, a willingness to learn and work with other people. Um, although I have a grassroots background in water curriculum education and have worked with the Coastal Watershed Council, the uh, Watsonville Wetlands, Watson Pub Watsonville Public Works and Utilities, uh, I've been teaching watershed art as a school curriculum throughout the county for 20 years. But I know that being this on this commission requires more specific knowledge, which I can learn. 
Uh, as a water educator, I have uh, connections with the Greater Santa Cruz County Community of Children and their parents. Uh, this pamphlet that I just passed around, our, our Water Works in Santa Cruz County, is part of my own curriculum, and my students created the water poems on the back, and Louise's poem on the back is carved into the a Watsonville Water Treatment Plant as an inspiration about water. Uh, as an artist, I bring to the table the language of art. Uh, living and working at the Tannery Arts Center, my art resources include over 300 immediate neighbors and many more in the greater art community. Uh, as a community activist, I know people who are not only willing, who are willing to be involved, but are actually already rolling on projects that serve our community's needs. Um, as a water commissioner, I think I would bring a new voice uh, to our needs here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your artwork, too. It's uh, yeah. quite amazing. Okay. Next up is Doug. Hi, Doug. Hi. Vice Mayor Myers, members of council, good evening. Thanks for your time. My name is Doug Engfer. I'm current chair of the Water Commission and uh, applying for reappointment for a second term. Uh, the application that I submitted provided background and sort of a look back. What I was going to try to do tonight was look forward a little bit more. And as I was thinking about the work in front of us in the next few years, uh, assuming I have the good fortune to be there, um, the overarching theme that came to mind for me related to investments and opportunities. We're going to be investing a huge amount of money and resources in our water system. And uh, I think there's a uh, a lot to be taken into account there as we as we go after that. There are three main areas I'd like to discuss: uh, the water supply itself, the environment, and, and the community. Um, and I'd be remiss not to thank you for the investment you've made in me over the last six years, participating in the Water Supply Advisory Committee as well as the Wash Water Commission. Um, with respect to the water supply, job one: safe, reliable, affordable, resilient. Uh, sustainable water supply for all of our customers, not just members of the city, but also member folks outside the city. We're going to be investing hundreds of millions of dollars over the next generation or two to accomplish that um, with the water supply augmentation strategy as a guide, uh, but also substantial reinvestment in our existing infrastructure. We need to do that with an eye towards stewardship of our rate payer contributions. And two minutes is going really fast here. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we have a, both a legal and a moral obligation to pay attention to the environment. The uh, staff does a great job uh, with that, but we have opportunities to ensure uh, riparian and ocean uh, community health. Uh, what's good for the critters is, is good for all of us. Um, and with respect to the community, um, we definitely need to be attentive to affordability. Uh, our rate structure is progressive within the guidelines allowed by the state, but we have more work we can do with respect to fees. Um, and my time is nearly up, so I will just thank you for your consideration. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get through all my remarks. Um, have good, if have you want to leave anything with us, you can, you can send them or send them by email. Okay, thank you okay. very much. Thanks very much, Doug. Okay, Alejandro, welcome. Hello, fellow council members, and thank you for your time this evening. Uh, my name is Alejandro Paramo, and I'm here today seeking appointments to our city's water commission. I'm a 26-year-old resident who works as a product manager at a local software company called Supply Shift, where we focus on corporate sustainability. I've been in this community for just over four years after spending four years as an undergraduate at UC Santa Barbara. Before this time, I spent 18 years of my youth growing up in our state's Central Valley in Modesto, California. It's through my time growing up in the Central Valley that I developed, that I developed a growing awareness and interest in the impact and importance of water policy to local, state, and regional communities. Being in the Central Valley and a descendant of farm workers, one quickly realizes water's pivotal role in our communities. I expanded upon this interest in water policy through my studies, where I received a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Science with an emphasis on water policy coursework from UC Santa Barbara. In particular, in particular I took an advanced water policy course with 10 selected students who excelled in the preceding course. We traveled across the state of California for two weeks, visiting significant water sites such as Owens Valley, Mono Lake, and Hetch, Hetch, Hetch Hetchy. We even took a trip to Santa Cruz where desalination was a critical topic here at the time. 
In addition to my studies where I took emphasis in water policy, I gained experience in student governance as chief of staff of our student advocate general, as well as policy experiences through my House of Representatives in Modesto. It is my intention to take my experiences, educational and policy related, to be appointed to the city's water commission as an active, thorough, and thoughtful representative of our city. It would be an honor to be appointed, appointed and an opportunity that I'd take to fulfill the duties with the best intentions as possible. I believe my education and experiences, relative newness to the community, and passion for sustainable and pragmatic water policy development make for a powerful fit for the Water Policy Commission. I thank you here for your time and consideration tonight. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. Uh, so did I miss anybody that was here tonight for any commissions? Looks like everybody's been here and spoken. So again, I just wanna thank everyone tonight for coming. Um, we'll be making the appointments at our next meeting, which is next Tuesday, January 28th. And um, so please come and join if you'd like to uh, listen to our debate. And um, again, just thank you very much for your willingness to serve, this, serve as a volunteer for the city of uh, Santa Cruz and have a good evening. Thanks. Thank you, Donna, Thank too. You. We are the, now nice job. Use the gavel. <laughs> there it is. The gavel. All right. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs>